How are we everyone? Well, somebody mentioned yesterday after I did the rocket stove that there's not much out there apparently on the NK. So, after doing the rocket stove, I thought food prep. We've really got a I've got the backup of the NK of the SK if we need it, but I don't think that we're going to have any problems and I have to say that the um, the sportsman blade I was talking to William today the sportsman blade that I got off William in the AEBL I use this without a lie almost every day in the kitchen and I can't remember when I got it but you know not once have I had to sharpen this thing yet so it's just an amazing knife it really is got to get yourselves a sportsman guys all right, so I've decided that it's that time again, pizza. So we're going to use the William Collins neck knife, which was designed as a companion for the survival knife. The survival knife is to do your big heavy duty stuff. The neck knife is to do your companion stuff, which in my opinion is your food processing. Um, small game, that sort of stuff, skinning, you know, this is what the knife was for. So, it's pizza time, let's start making pizzas. And, where are we? Alright, so, a lot of the basic stuff, which we've already seen done, um, I'm not going to go out afterwards and do a one stick fire like I normally do, because... I don't see the point in doing that this time. It's been proved with the um, um, the rocket stove the other day, so we don't need to worry about that. It actually slides just like the big one, but. I like these grinds that Williams put on the blades. There's two different grinds there, so I'm really interested to see how that's going to come up shortly um, with doing a few bits. Um, I don't think there's going to be any problems with anything at all that you're doing as far as a pizza topping, but I want to see just how well it does process everything and. The first thing that I've got to say is it's ridiculously sharp and it's chewing into the cutting board. I can feel it slicing into the plastic cutting board. So that is fantastic. Well, not for the cutting board, but <laughs> it is for everything else. So I'm trying to get the right angle here because it's... It's only a small belly part that we're using, but it does it so well. And it's the the double grind on a small blade that makes it feel a little different. Um, all right, so I'm going to just put these over here, and then I want to see how well it processes. The mushrooms because it should quite easily um, cut through I keep dropping the, <laughs> keep dropping the last bit so it should cut through the oh wow now I've got to say this if you can see it a little bit better here the belly on this where the flat grind is it doesn't need to be pushed like it's a mushroom so it's soft it will just go straight down and that's unbelievable and I'm talking thin pieces of mushroom and it it just wants to cut through like without sliding That's great.
Wow, does an amazing job on mushrooms. A lot of you have probably thought, yeah, well, nothing big. It's like a boring video. Well, thanks for stopping by. <laughs> but let's see what else it wants to do. Some cooked chicken. All right, this is just going to fall apart. Let's see if I can slice it a bit better. It's the thing with the thigh fillet, it just wants to fall apart. It processes through really, really well, actually, for a soft meat. You know, at the end of the day, we all know it, it's chicken. It's not trying to cut through rawhide. I'm only showing you here what um, I think of the knife and the way it works with what I'm checking it out with. So, chicken, not a problem at all. Okay, so another one of my favorites. Got to have pepperoni on a pizza. Oh, that belly is just unbelievable for the angle. I, I honestly can't say enough about that little angle right there. All right, so let's just make it a bit easier. And we'll cut it down in the halves and see how it slices. Wow. Again, beautiful. Now I'm going to try starting from over here at the back where that belly starts and just pull. <laughs> wow. I don't think this is what you had in mind when you designed the knife, William, but wow. And I'm not putting any pressure on that because you don't need to. As I said, this knife is ridiculously sharp. And as you all saw the other day, I cut myself on the SK just by touching the hedge. So, one thing you do have to be careful with on a Collins blade is how sharp it is. Now, as I said, I was talking to William today and I asked him what his favourite steel was out of what he does, whether it was the O1 or the AEBL. And... It was a little hard, I think, to start with, but he soon came up with the fact that the AEBL, being such a stainless steel, and it is completely stain-proof for what he has tested it with, um, I really didn't know if it would go away from the O1, but he said that the AEBL was his, uh, his favourite, so that's great. Um... All right, let's, let's do the old jalapeno. Now, I'm actually going to stuff one of these with um, some bacon and uh, a prawn. So what I'm gonna do is see about just hollowing this out carefully. I can see a, a slip coming here. And it's really bad when you can feel that it's going to happen. Oh, maybe not. There we go. Okay, so there's one side done. I'll leave a couple of the seeds in. You've got to have a bit of heat. Well, I like the heat of them. 
but they're jalapenos, so they're not that hot. Alright, so that is another good idea with the way that tip is designed to be able to slice it through that way. Alright, so we've got our jalapeno, or one of them processed. Now, a little red chilli for a bit of heat. Where's my chilli? Alright, so we want some nice circles here. Seeds, you got to have your seeds. I'm actually a little bit excited. I was talking to Justin Wolf today, who um, again was thanking me for the William Collins Skinner that I gave him for Christmas. And he was telling me that he's going to be going hunting in the next day or two to get himself a, a goose and a couple of coons to uh, fix up for his, his chickens. So don't think that you can't give meat to your chickens because they love that stuff. All right, tomato. Now, let's see how we... It's actually a, a biggish tomato, so this might be a, a bit of a problem for the small blade. Uh, I don't know how I want to cut this one actually, but it's, as I said, it is super sharp, it just wants to slice through the tomato skin. Alright, I'll process that up a little bit later. We'll just get that cut so we knew how it was going to, to handle it. Uh, what else do we have? Oh, that's right. I'll be back in a second. All right. I forgot the bacon. Can't have a pizza without the bacon. And I think we're just going to do this in the nice long strips. The belly design on this, William, I don't know what made you think of this. But either way, just running it straight forward or back. It's hitting the edge on the front and it's hitting the edge here on the the back of the belly so either way you you're cutting beautifully Okay, so, too easy to process all this up, but that's what the design of this knife was. As I said, it was a companion knife to the SK for doing the smaller jobs. I want to make sure that when I'm out and about doing something on camp, that the knife is going to do my food prep. That's the big thing for me, is to be able to prep food. Um, the other thing that's essential on pizzas is cabana. Must have cabana. And this is good because this one was in the freezer, so it's still nice and solid. We'll see how it... Um... Greatest of ease. Okay, I'm finding that with the the knife, if you just actually push down on that front section on the flat grind there, you're getting on some things here a better cut than what you are 
on the slicing motion that you'd normally get because when you go on a slicing motion you've already gone there past the belly so then you've got to come back you're better off I think just putting that front little part into the meat and then pushing down and it seems to want to cut that a lot easier than sliding I could be wrong maybe it's just because um, I'm using a frozen piece of cabana at the moment instead of uh, something that was a little softer I don't know but that just gave it a little bit of a better feel for me so the other thing I can feel that tip running across my finger then actually okay and the last thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make it a surf and turf so of course gotta have a couple of prawns <laughs> yeah yeah you little prawns on it perfect so we knew that there was going to be no challenge at all for this knife food prep wise but I did want to see just how well it worked and I've got to say that I honestly don't think you could have an SK without an NK for the companion um, I could have done all of this and I will do all of this again with the NK or uh, the SK sorry to show that you can use the big blade for food prep just as easy as you can a small blade but I think for versatility this little blade is great now I've been doing a few things with it I haven't done anything major yet and there's no need to abuse a knife that's what it is it's a knife and we've said it before unless you are unless you know that you're going to need to baton through something then you use a hatchet or an axe or, or something big to process through you don't just sit there and baton through trees because you've seen it done I don't see that there's a need to do that some knives like the other day, I batoned the living hell out of the, uh, the SK. But that's because that's what that knife was designed for. For hard use. For survival situations. This is a companion knife. It's not designed for that. So the other day doing the little rocket stove, I knew that there was going to be no problem with the knife. But it still was not what it was designed for. But using it for its design purpose, food prep, this knife is phenomenal. It really is. I would give this, um, you know, I'm not going to rate anything 10 out of 10 because I think there's room for improvement in anything, uh, whether it's a knife. Um, something that you do something that somebody else does you know there's always room for improvement but there's not much when it comes to this now today somebody said oh your knives are really pretty William and he said no I don't do pretty he said oh, oh sorry I don't do purdy <laughs> you might not do purdy but I tell you what somebody said that his knives the conversation came up anyway that William said that his knives aren't perfect because there might be a scratch on it. The handle might be a little bit different to what you would normally expect. And I said to William, no, William, your knives are perfect. Everyone else is imperfect. That's the way that I describe William Collins' knives. They are perfect. It's the other ones that I've got that aren't. I... I'm going to put a good eight and a half, nine on this knife overall because 
I love the size handle that's on it. It feels great in the hand and it just does an amazing job with food. So, um, yeah, I highly recommend that if you don't already have one, that you, I'll bring you up here again. There we go. If you don't already have one of the NKs, order them because they're no longer a production blade. It would have been great to see these keep going. I think maybe William may end up making them in the new AEBL. If that's the case, then yes, I will end up with one of these in AEBL. To go with the SK that I'm ordering in AEBL. <laughs> Why not? They're an amazing knife. So do yourselves a favour. Get yourselves a William Collins blade, whether it's his SK, the NK, the Sportsman. Um, I have my Master Woodsman being sheathed at the moment. Uh, then the Sainer Scout will be arriving in January. Uh, maybe February, I think. So I'm going to keep buying William Collins knives because the quality exceeds other knives. That's just all there is to it. Some people prefer the uh, their Essies, their K-Bars, their, their Benchmade. There's so many different brands out there. But personally, my uh, choice is a William Collins knife every time. Take it easy guys and I'll see you on the next one. I'm going to go make pizza.